My name is Leland Ferguson. I was a Soul Train dancer from 1979 to 2004. I was born in Indianapolis, Indiana. I couldn't stay there because I got sick. I used to catch pneumonia, so the doctor preferred me to be on the West Coast where it was warmer, and my father transferred out here. He worked for the Aerosmith company, and I stayed out here since five. I used to hear like the Ford Tops, the Temptations, and my parents really liked that. You know, you just see them displaying love for the music, and that's how I started to see the dance. After that, I wanted to pursue dancing. When we moved from Indianapolis, we landed in Inglewood, and I went to Inglewood High School. I went to high school with Eric Red, Soul Train Dancer, Louis Carr, Soul Train Dancer, a couple of more, and myself. Most high schools, they have like a talent show. I saw how the ladies really went crazy over the guys that were in the talent show. So I put myself in the talent show, and I did only routines that had dancing, Temptations, Four Tops the Jackson 5, so that's how I start dancing. One of the young ladies that went to my high school worked under Pam, and she said, hey, Leland, you wanna go to Soul Train? And I was like, okay. So she said, well, come with me. I know that I'm not a Soul Train dancer, but I'm a guest. Once that music came on, because it's so loud, and it's just like your body wants to move. So I'm on the floor trying to dance, and then Chuck kind of called me and said, can I talk to you for a second? And I was like, yeah. He said, follow me. So I'm thinking I'm going to meet the man. I'm super like excited, right? He walks me down the corridor, which would be like backstage near a green room. He takes me to the door. I step to the side, say, after you, Chuck. He said, no, no, after you. He opens the door. I walk out thinking he's walking behind me and the door shuts. There's no handle on the door. It's a sound stage. So even if I beat it, no one could hear me. And I found out that I was back out on the street again. <laughs> After I got kicked off the show the first time, I tried one more time, I went again. And it was the same situation, so I didn't try to get on Soul Train anymore. I'm like, ah, you know, I just didn't try. So I continued dancing in nightclubs, and I was dancing on videos, wherever I would hear, like, they need dancers. One day, I was at Contempo Nightclub, it's in Culver City at the Ramada Inn, and I turn around and Eric's there. And he says, can I talk to you for a second? And I'm like, sure. He's like, I need you to come on Soul Train. And I'm like, uh, Eric, I got thrown off of Soul Train. I, I, I've done that a couple of times and it didn't go well for me. He's like, look, man, I watched you dance and perform in this nightclub and all these people like the way you dance. Why won't you do it on a bigger stage and let the national see you? And I was like, that makes sense. So I said, sure, I come. So I went to the taping and then the next month I didn't show up. I kept dancing, doing my stuff in the club. He came back to Contemples and he said, what happened? And I said, what do you mean, Eric? He said, I want you to be a regular. I said, oh, I didn't know. I just thought you wanted me to dance one time on the show and then, you know, that was it for me. He's like, no, there's a place for you on Soul Train. And from that time, I want to say, uh, 83, 84, I danced all the way to 2004. The fashion style I had was more like how I'm dressed. I was in suits. My mom didn't want me on Soul Train having my body hanging out. She wanted me to look neat. So that was kind of my style. I like wearing suits. I learned to dance in suits. Even though I have to dance with energy, I learned to do it under the lights and try to keep my body temperature down so you wouldn't see patches under my arm from sweating. But, you know, that was my style. The Soul Train line was so important because for those few seconds, everyone gets a chance to see you. This is the time either you're gonna do it and people are gonna see you, or you don't make the line. Now, what's funny, the audience sees the line. They're like, oh, that was pretty cool, the girl line, the guy line, right? But they don't see what happens before the line. That is the funniest part that no one sees. The people that are visiting, the people that are guests, everybody thinks I can get in the line. And this is kind of how you know your weight as a dancer on the show, if you're a regular. I would just go stand wherever I walk up into the line. And then constantly they would move, Louis, you start. Manuel, you go second. 
Leland, you go third. They would put you in order. And Eric Kassim never wanted to embarrass anyone in that situation, because it's kind of like, I want to dance. I want to show what I can do. So he'd say, hey, Leland, follow me. And I would walk with him. He'll be talking to me, but he'll be like getting you out of the line, back into the audience area. And then Don would say, Eric, are we ready to go? And Eric's like, yes, Don, we're ready to go. And then the music, boom, it goes in. So it was clever how he got people that first time didn't know how to do the lines, because it's a step, 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 back, step, step, step. Some people just get in and they stand because like, I'm in the line, I'm in the line. So the Soul Train line is, is the most popular part of the show. Some of my favorite memories was dancing with the girls in the girls' line. That's when you knew you had power. Going down the girl line was a big thing because most of America liked the women coming down the line. So you can't mess up the woman's line. So if you're gonna go over in that line, your routine has to be on point, has to be hit, and it has to be approved by Don. If Don don't like it, you're out. You just go back to the guy's line. I was fortunate to do a lot of routines with one dancer named Christina. I did a lot of dancing with her down the line. And then later, uh, Monique came. I started doing everything with Monique. Then I said to myself, why am I dancing in the girls' line? I'm a guy. I brought the girls over into the guys' line, and I just started doing it on the stage coming down the line. My cousin is Leland Ferguson. Leland was already kind of a known dancer on Soul Train, so I'm like, let's go up there. My cousin get me in. Went up to the studio, sit outside the gate. I'm like, oh, we're about to do this. We're about to show these dudes how L.A. dances. And Leland walked right by me. Like, what's up, cousin? Everybody knew I knew the talent coordinator. It would have been nice if he came to the line and told me ahead of time. There were good dancers, no doubt about it. But the way he did it, I was like laughing. I'm like, okay. I told Eric, my cousin's in line. He's with a couple of friends. Can we do something to get him in? Eric said he'll take care of it. They did get in. Life as a Soul Train dancer in the 80s was great. Myself, Louie, Rosie Perez, Dale, Manuel, Ricky, and there were two other girls. We go to Silk's nightclub. It's a popular nightclub. All the ball players, you know, they go there. Entertainers go there. It was one of the biggest clubs in Oakland. So we're in line, so we go up, we talk to the guys, and I said, we dance on Soul Train. And he said, for real? He said, I've never seen you on Soul Train. I said, hold on a second. I went back and got Rosie and brought Rosie to the front. They saw Rosie, and they're like, well, who else is here? I'm like, we got a few more. Okay, bring them all to the front. We go in the nightclub. We having fun. This club has an upstairs that looks over the floor, but they have four different ways to get to the floor. We just dancing, having fun, and then all of a sudden, the lights change and the music change. I want to say it was Hammer Song, Ring em. All of a sudden, Hammer's coming down one stair, Ace is coming down another stair, three, five, seven's coming down another stair, and a couple of more dancers coming down. This was planned, because as they came down, the crowd backed up, and here we are in a dance battle against Hammer and his crew. So, you know, of course, they're in the home turf, everybody's cheering for them, but we had a dance that no one had seen yet. It was when Prince had that song called Head, but we called it Housequake. We made this dance, it's where you jerk your head really hard, you look to the right and jerk your head and you look to the left. So we started doing it to Hammer and we kind of lined up and everybody was like, they started cheering for us because they had never seen that, that dance. So Hammer's like, how you gonna come in my backyard and turn us out? Fast forward, after Hammer got signed, now he's big, big production, he comes on Soul Train. And we always remind him, we beat you in your backyard. most memorable moment. I think for me, it would be dancing with the artists because we're known as the dancers and people are looking around like, Lou, where's Leland? Eric, is Leland coming today? I don't see him. I'm in the green room getting ready for the show and then they don't know I'm coming on and then the artist starts off and then it's the part where the dancers come in and then you hear this big roar because they're like, oh, that's our boy. So dancing with the artists. 
some of the artists that I performed with, Climax, Jeffrey Daniels, probably my favorite, Vanessa Williams. We taught her how to do Robocop. In her music video, it's a breakdown. It goes, uh, uh. There, we taught her, but when they shot it, they just had us in the background, like kind of like shugging our shoulders. My overall experience was great. I would do it all over again. Because what changed the culture, black America start feeling proud. It was cool to have a big afro. It was cool to have dreadlocks. It was cool for the woman to have braids. Where in some incidents, you couldn't wear that to work. So Soul Train was a vehicle where you could just let loose and be your natural self. Soul Train taught me how to be a man, how to be a gentleman, and respect everyone. So that's the motto that Pam kind of taught we went on there as youths, but we came out men and women. <laughs>